Hi everybody, welcome to the next lecture on video coding. So today I want to continue where we stopped last time, uh, which was basically um, the chroma subsampling. So we see that we can do the chroma subsampling because the eye is less sensitive for color in the spatial domain. So we have only uh, about 6 million um, cones, but about 110 million rods. And since the cones are responsible for color, we have much less spatial resolution. And this can be used for coding by uh, using our transform um, to the color space and then just encode the color components with reduced spatial resolution, as we can see here. So a typical resolution was this 4 to 0, which means we do a downsampling of the color components CB and CR by a factor of 2 horizontally and vertically. So the question is, how do we do this subsampling right? And this is what's today's topic. So today is about downsampling, upsampling and filtering for it. So how do we do the downsampling in the encoder and then the upsampling in the decoder such that we don't see artifacts and such that it is not too complex uh, for either encoder and decoder. So if in the encoder we simply downsample our image directly by keeping only every second sample or nth sample in general, we might get aliasing artifacts if we have fine patterns in the image. So fine patterns corresponds to high spatial frequencies and, um, and the sampling theorem tells us if we um, have too high frequencies, uh, then we get aliasing after sampling. So if in the decoder we simply upsample our image by inserting n minus one zeros after each sample in each dimension, we obtain a pointy image, means an image which consists only of those points which are non-zero, surrounded by those uh, black spaces which are zeros. So this results again from aliasing or spectral copies of our image. So we have aliasing, um, the aliasing we need to take care of during downsampling and also upsampling on both sides. So to avoid both, we need to suitably, suitably low pass our image before downsampling to get rid of the high frequencies which could create aliasing and also low, pa and also low pass filter it after upsampling as a sort of interpolation. So after upsampling we have aliasing in the newly obtained high frequency re regions which we obtain from the higher sampling rate and we need to get rid of those spectral copies too. And this uh, filtering, low pass filtering, can also be viewed as interpolation. Yeah, so this is what we know from one dimensional signal processing. So we have a signal, then we low pass filter it to remove the high frequencies, which might create aliasing, and then we are ready for downsampling it by this factor of n. So this low pass filtering is done uh, with a cutoff frequency of one nth of the original Nyquist frequency. And then in the decoder, we have the reverse process. First, the upsampling, which now creates alias components, spectral copies. And then we low pass filter the signal to keep the original spectral copy. And this is then our reconstructed low pass signal. Yeah, so we now just have to think about how to extend it to two-dimensional signals like images. Remember, image have horizontal and vertical dimensions. So first, how do we do up and down sampling in Python? It's actually fairly easy. In Python, we can do the up and down sampling. Um, there's a typo. Using the indexing tricks uh, using the colon. For instance, take a vector y, just some array of numbers here, then y of 0, colon 4, colon 2 means take the values of indices from 0 
up to but excluding four in steps of two. So here we would have um, index zero and two. And zero colon colon two means take the values of indices from zero to the end in steps of two. Right, so here we take every second sample starting from zero. So this is then convenient for downsampling. For instance, with a factor of two, this is simply y of zero colon colon two. And uh, we can simply assign this downsampled array to yds, ds for downsampled. So yds now contains the downsampled signal. So this is in principle how we do the downsampling. For a two-dimensional signal, downsampling is done in each dimension. So if y is now a two-dimensional array, then we would simply apply this downsampling to each dimension, as you can see here. So here we downsample the first dimension and here the second dimension. And for upsampling, we would first generate a vector of zeros of suitable size. So the size that we expect after upsampling. And here you can see it. Here we would have um, four zeros. And then we simply assign every second value to the output. So here, this is now our upsample signal. Here we now count up our index of the output by two and assign every second sample of this output, of this upsample signal, the values of our previously downsampled version. So that means we have a sample, then we have a zero, then we have a next sample and a zero and so on. So this is how we would implement um, the um, insertion of zeros. For a two-dimensional signal, we need to do the upsampling in each dimension. So then we would have a two-dimensional initialization. Here y upsampled is initialized with four by four zeros. So four zeros in each dimension. And then we do the same trick. Basically, we assign a value to every second uh, index horizontally and vertically. So that's easy enough. So here's a Python example for video now, how this looks like um, with a video. So this is shown in the following Python example. We take each frame and downsample it by n equals eight in each dimension, and then upsample it and display the result. So we could also use Python 3. So first let's take a look at what this Python program is doing. Copy and I open it with my gedit editor. So here it is. And here we can see what it's doing. So the beginning is like we saw last time. We use um, OpenCV for video capture. Here camera zero. Cap is not the object for video capture. And here we read a frame just to see um, um, the dimension that we get. So we could also adjust this dimension, but here we just keep it, keep it as it is. Here we can see um, the two filters which I will be using. The first is a very simple rectangular filter kernel, which just consists of eight by eight ones um, divided by eight. And then the second one is a little bit more sophisticated triangular filter kernel, which simply consists of taking this simple first one and convolving it by itself in two dimensions and divide it here. Here we can um, see we have flags again. Filter on flag, which tells us if the filter is on or off. And here we have a flag for rectangular filter. Um, which can be on and off. So here we have two filters to choose from. And here in this infinite loop, we can see that we now first read a frame. Now we compute um, the 
luminance version, the y component out of it with our usual factors here and with a normalization to the range between 0 and 1 because we now want to work with float numbers and then we display the original. Then here we, um, we query the, to um, the flags. So if we have rectangular filter, this is filter 1, else we have filter number 2. Then if filter on is true, then we do the convolution of y, our luminance filter, and uh, our luminance signal with our filter that we selected here. So we do this here with a two-dimensional convolution. And then we do the downsampling, right? Just the way we just saw it. First filtering, and now we can do the downsampling here by a factor of n, capital N. And here we just keep all the zeros in it. So basically, um, here I'm avoiding um, the removal of the zeros and reinsertion of the zeros because um, um, we need to do both anyway. So I just um, avoid removing the zeros. So that's why I have this index jump on the left hand side and also on this right hand side. Yeah, and then here we have the next filter. This is the same filter, but now for um, the decoder side basically. So here, if the filter is on, then we filter it. If not, then we don't. Then we just apply the copy here. Yeah, here you can see how we have some text on the reconstructed um, image um, to show um, how to use it. Here in the filtered version. And then here we have our wait key command. Here you can see now we have 50 milliseconds wait. So this gives us about 20 frames per second. Um, so I made it a little bit slower because the filtering actually takes some time and uh, I wanna, um, I, I don't wanna overload my computer here. And using this wait key, I'm also um, asking for which key is pressed and do um, either the toggling of the filter on or the rectangular filter or the quit for breaking this infinite loop. Okay, so let's try it. So now execute it. So Python 3. Let's see. Yeah, so here you can see the reconstructed version and here to the left is the original black and white version. And here you can now see filter is false, rectangular filter is true, which at this point doesn't really matter because we're not doing filtering. So here you can see the effect of down and up sampling. So basically we just keep every eighth um, pixel and everything in between is zero. So you can see there's not much left from the original picture. So that shows the damage that is done by just doing the sampling and not doing the filtering. And we can also see the effect of um, aliasing by looking at a test image. So from basics of video technology, I have this test image, those stripes, and I can hold it in front of the camera. And to the right, you can see that we get alias patterns. So here are those stripes they are not in the original, right? So they come from down sampling without filtering. So now I can turn on the filter. So F for filter. So now you can see it's much better, right? But since we have the rectangular filter here, which means we just have a, a constant um, impulse response, um, over um, the size of 8x8 eight eight pixels and we get those blocking artifacts. So that also doesn't really look good. And also when we take our stripe test image and hold it in front of it, you can see, you, you still see alias components. So that is also um, um, showing that uh, the filter is not really that good. 
end. So yeah, so this blocking artifacts that we can see are an effect of a not good filter and also um, the remaining alias components. So now I'm toggling for a better filter, this pyramidal filter. Filter is on. So T. So now I have this pyramidal filter in here. Now you can see it looks more unsharp, but the edges, those um, blocking artifacts, are basically gone. So that's good. So let me try my test image again. So here's my test image. And you can see also those alias components, um, they're pretty much gone. What you see is just a more or less gray surface, but no alias components. So that is how it's supposed to be, right? It basically removes the aliasing. It doesn't uh, display um, any artificial patterns. So let me quit here. Yeah, so that worked nicely. And this shows you uh, why we need a um, filter for before downsampling and after upsampling. Yeah. So here in the example, we downsampled the Y component for easy visibility, right, for the demo purpose. But in the coder, we would downsample the CB and CR components, U and V. Right, so don't mix them up. So this is just for demo that I'm using the Y because then you can more easily see that it becomes more unsharp. The purpose of doing it in CB and CR is actually that you don't see it. But uh, that's good for coding, but bad for demo. That's why I use the Y. So the filtering uses, as we saw, the signal convolve2d as a convolution or filter function. Uh, where we 2D convolve our frame with a 2D filter kernel. It's called the 2D um, impulse response is also called filter kernel. Yeah, and this is the 2D version of a low pass filter. So, <clears throat> yeah, so the Python program uses two types of our low pass filter, as you just saw, toggling with the key T. Filter one, the first one is, as I just mentioned, um, constant value over eight by eight coefficients. So it's basically a square matrix with entries of one eighth. So basically NP1s of 8,8 divide by, divided by eight. So this is filter one. And here you can see how it looks like. So we have here the two indices of the two dimensions, n1 and n2, and here's the value. So here I have just one, it doesn't really matter, it's a constant value. Yeah, and filter two results from convolving filter one with itself. Here you can see it, we have filter number one twice in the argument, so convolve 2D convolves it with itself, and here normalization with a factor of eight. So this division by eight is a power normalization such that the total power of the kernel adds up to one or close to it. Yeah, and the convolution with itself in the spatial domain results in the multiplication with itself, hence a squaring, in the frequency domain. And this in turn makes the small values of the transfer function in the stop band at the higher frequencies even smaller. That means we get more attenuation there but it leaves the values close to one for the transfer function in the passband almost unchanged. And this is what we want. We wanna keep our image in the, um, in the passband, but we wanna more stop and attenuation. And this is what we get. So hence, this results in a better low pass filter. So, but this 2D spatial impulse response is a 15 by 15 matrix with the highest value in the center. So it's bigger, which means more computational complexity. And the effect of this convolution is that we have values linearly decaying towards the boundaries like a pyramid. Right? We have a peak in the center, and then it tapers off to zeros 
after 15 samples. So the low pass filter is toggled on and off with a keyboard key F and the filter type is toggled with a key T. So here you can see the resulting impulse response. Again, this is N1 and this is N2, the indices of the two dimensions of our image. And we can see over those 15 indices, in the middle we have the peak and then towards the edges it tapers off to zero linearly. Yeah, so we saw without a low pass filter, we see a dot pattern. And a fine pattern in the image results in visible aliasing artifacts in the sampled image, in those wavy lines that we observed in our test image. And turning on a simple size 8x8 pixel rectangular 2D filter kernel with key F removes the aliasing artifacts um, mostly, so that means we don't see the dots anymore. Um, but it leads to blocking artifacts and noticeably slower computation, right? And we still saw the aliasing artifacts from our test image. The result looks um, like just larger pixels because we have this rec rectangular 2D filter. The filter basically looks like a big pixel. So this is also called sample and hold. Uh, which means it holds the value of the sample until the value of the next sample arrives. Yeah, so observe convolution of our impulse response with the pulses of our sampled image results in placing the impulse response at the place of the pulses. So basically we replace each of the pulses by this um, rectangular impulse response or filter kernel. Then turning on a permit shaped size 15 by 15 2D filter with key T removes the blocking artifacts but leads to even slower computation because of the larger size of our filter color. The reconstructed image looks like from a linear interpolation between neighboring pixels. Right, so that's basically because we have this linear decay from um, the peak of one pixel. Um, to the beginning of the next pixel. And where those linear shapes um, overlap, we have a linear interpolation. So now the pyramid impulse response appears at the place of the sample pulses, and adding them up results in a linear interpolation. So this is what we observed. So it's not blocky anymore, um, but we have a linear interpolation between neighboring pixels. Yeah, so how do we design good 2D filters um, such that we get good results and still reasonably fast computation? For that, it is helpful to look at the 2D frequency domain. So here's the 2D discrete Fourier transform. In the mathematical description, we will use boldface characters for matrices and vectors for clarity. So, for instance, our image consists of pixel values um, x of n1 and 2. So that's basically our entire image, this x, with position, position images uh, indices n1 and n2 in the ranges of n1 between 0 and capital N1, and n2 is between 0 and capital N2. Then the 2D discrete Fourier transform, or the 2D DFT, gives us this 2D frequency domain and is defined as in this formula. So you can see it's basically like the one-dimensional Fourier transform or discrete Fourier transform, but with those two uh, Fourier transform kernels, one kernel for the first index and then this, and the similar kernel for the second index and we have a double sum. So this is basically like applying a one-dimensional um, DFT twice along the columns and along the rows. Yeah, and since we have a DFT, the index for the Nyquist frequency is capital N over 2 for frequency index 1, K1, 
and for frequency index k2 it's capital two capital n2 divided by two so it's usually as usual it's a half the maximum because remember for the dft we have a frequency range which covers positive and negative frequencies and that's why the frequency indices go from zero to almost sampling frequency and we know Nyquist is half the sampling frequency yeah so as i mentioned this 2d dft is equivalent to the application of our one-dimensional dft to the rows and columns of our image and in python uh, fortunately we have this function already built in, in even a two-dimensional version it's in numpy.fft.fft2. So we can simply apply this to our image. So we can plot an intensity plot of the two-dimensional DFT coefficients using cv2.imshow of numpy.apps of x, uh, where x is the 2D DFT of the image. So this way we can plot the 2D DFT as an image with the frequency indices K1 and K2 as the image coordinates and the magnitude, here the magnitude of X, as the brightness. So this is similar to a spectrogram plot, but instead of the time frequency axis, we now have the normalized X frequency K2 and Y frequency K1 so horizontal and vertical frequencies. Since we apply the DFT vertically and horizontally, the lowest frequencies horizontally are located at the left and also right corners. Remember, the DFT goes up to the sampling frequency and the sampling frequency, because of this periodicity of our frequency domain, is the same as frequency zero. So we have it at k equals 0 and k equals n minus 1. So we have it here in the left and right corners and the lowest frequencies vertically at the top and bottom corners. And that means the Nyquist frequency is located in the middle, horizontally and vertically, which means in the center. We also have the inverse 2D DFT and it almost looks like the forward 2D DFT, except that we have a plus sign in the exponents of the E. And we have the frequency domain image with the complex numbers um, inside the sums. So here you can see it. And the sum index goes over the frequency indices K1 and K2. Right. And um, yeah, we have this factor in front of it. So in Python, we have this function IFFT2 of x. So that's again convenient. So here is now a Python example. Uh, in this example, uh, we take the webcam input, compute the wide luminance component again, and display it. And then it takes the 2D DFT and displays its magnitude in a separate window. So then we can see how um, the 2D DFT looks on the video. And then it takes the inverse 2D DFT and displays it in the final third window. So here we have also a few options so with keyboard control. Uh, when we press the key F, then um, F for filter, then we can switch on a low pass. So before transforming back, this applies a mask basically. Um, so this mask sets all the coefficients of high frequencies to zero. So those high frequencies uh, that uh, might contain the alias components, the spectral images. So this is a convenient way to get rid of those. And after applying this mask, uh, setting the high frequencies to zero, we apply the inverse 2D DFT to get back our image, our low pass filtered image. And um, this is done before the downsampling and after the upsampling. Right. 
So basically, this is how we sort of should apply our low pass filtering. So instead of um, doing the convolution in the space domain, we now apply this mask in the frequency domain of the DFT. Um, we can also turn on and off sampling. So we use a key S and we sample by a factor of, in our example, actually it's a four, uh, horizontally and vertically. And we can turn it on and off. First, we do the downsampling in the encoder and then the upsampling in the decoder. So here's the example. So first I can open the program in my terminal window. So let me open my terminal window. G edit this program. And here you can see it. So usual um, stuff in the beginning, it opens the camera. Here we set a downsampling factor. We uh, first read a first frame just to determine how many rows and columns we have. And then we define some filters. So here you can see uh, that we define the mask. Right? This is the mask that we apply in the frequency domain where we um, have ones at the four corners of our DFT, which represents the low frequencies. So here we initialize it with all ones. And then the center region is set to zeros. So this is where we have the high frequencies. First for the rows, here for the columns, and then we combine them both uh, with this dot product. So here, mask for the rows and mask for the columns. So here we have a, um, um, a row column, uh, a, a column. Here we have a row. So basically, um, the dot product then turns it into a matrix of the size of our image that we can directly apply it to. So here we have a text which we want to display um, basically to help figuring out which keys to press and to see the state in which the system is in. Here we have our flags for filter on and off and here for sampling on and off. And this is our infinite loop here, which in the beginning reads one frame from the camera. Then we turn uh, this frame into a luminance component Y. Then we display it together with the text. So here I'm adding the text to it. And here I'm doing the processing steps if the flags are on, right, if they are true. So here, if the filter is on, we first apply the 2D DFT to Y, we apply the mask, removing the high frequencies, and then we apply the inverse FFT to it to go back into the spatial domain. So here the Y is now our low pass filtered um, Y component. Similar for the sampling. If the sampling is on, then basically it sets everything to zero except for every nth uh, pixel in our image. And then our new uh, Y component will be the downsampled version. Yeah, and here's the decoding side. So after we are done with the encoding side, at the end of the encoding side, we are back in the spatial domain. So here uh, we are on the decoding side, and again, we can turn on and off the sampling. So if we have the sampling on, then um, basically first we display the state, saying that sampling is on, or that sampling is off. And the same for the filtering. If the filter is on, then we display it on the screen so we can easily see the state. Then we apply the, again the Fourier transform, the two-dimensional Fourier transform to our um, luminance component Y, which comes from the encoder. And if the filter flag is on or true, then we basically again apply the mask 
element-wise multiplication of our mask to the 2D DFT of our luminance image. Right? So this is the result then after removing the high frequencies. And if we um, do the sampling, then um, we first um, do some scaling here. And um, then we show uh, the image. So this shows the um, image in the 2D DFT domain. So after we display this 2D DFT image, after our processing, we do the inverse 2D DFT. Here's the inverse to obtain the spatial domain back, and then we display it. And then we have the wait key command, which basically queries the keyboard, which key was pressed, and toggles our flags accordingly or leaves the, um, this infinite loop if we press the key Q. Okay, so now let's try it. So now I'm executing it with Python 3. So here you can see the result. So on the upper left hand corner you have the original coming from the camera, the Y component, the luminance component, and you can see the description of the keys that we, that we can use. So, and then down here, you can see the 2D um, DFT applied to the video, to each frame. And you can now see here also the state, no sampling, no filtering. And here you can also see that uh, the high magnitude coefficients, which appear wide here, they are in the low frequency corners. Right, so you can see my images, my images, my frames consist mostly of low frequencies, and um, that's a property of natural images. They usually um, have mostly low frequencies. So I could also open my test image of those um, vertical stripes and hold it in front of the camera, and now you can see that we get more high frequency components. So now you can see all those bright stripes and dots in the uh, 2D DFT domain. So when I make those stripes finer, those high frequencies now go towards the center of our uh, 2D DFT domain. And this shows again that the highest frequencies are in the center. Right, so you can see it nice high, high frequencies which appear. And these high frequencies are then a problem when we do the sampling. So let me now turn on the sampling, key S. And now you can see that we have um, all those high frequencies um, multiplying. And also the low frequencies. So now without the test image you see that all the low frequency components which were in the four corners now are repeated horizontally and vertically. So in each direction we have a repetition, we have um, spectral copies. And the result of those spectral copies is that the reconstructed image consists of individual pixel dots, which you can see here in the reconstructed image. So it really looks bad because of all those individual dots. So it's not really a contiguous image, it's just individual dots and it doesn't really look good. So what we need to do is get rid of all those spectral copies that we have here. And those spectral copies even become worse if we have our test image of um, the fine pattern. So here you can see my test image and you can see here now our frequency domain image looks like a starry sky. Uh, many stripes and dots all over the place. And that leads to the alias artifacts that you now see also in the reconstructed image. Those um, artificial lines um, that appear uh, which should not be there. So let me turn it on again. My artificial stripe image. So you can easily see when 
um, I'm turning my image, you get those artificial wavy lines in the reconstruction. That's another way of um, aliasing. Yeah, so here you can also see those alias components um, which appear in the, those high frequencies. They are repeated all over the place and um, they are also um, at high frequencies. So to get rid of those, I simply turn on my filter. So basically set zero all the high frequencies. So here now filter on, key F. So now everything in the middle is set to zero and what's left is only the original frequency components and now you can see here my fine pattern is still there in the original but it disappeared in the reconstructed. So in the reconstructed is more or less a gray image. You still have some wavy lines but um, much suppressed. So that also shows you that the filter is not perfect but we get a much reduced alias effect. And you can also see that um, the camera image now looks much better because we have a contiguous image. It's not just individual pixels which we see, but now we have smooth surfaces that appear because that fits much better to natural images. So here you can see all those alias components are now removed using the filter and uh, we get back a much more look, a much more natural looking um, video. But we can also observe um, artifacts, so those wavy lines here at the uh, boundaries of the image, um, those are artifacts from the filter. So this is called ringing artifacts because this is um, oscillations and this is an artifact that appears uh, if the impulse response of your low pass filter is very low. So in this case the impulse response would re um, result from taking the inverse 2D DFT from our mask um, in the frequency domain and uh, since the mask is as big as our uh, image, um, also the inverse 2D DFT would be as big as our image. Um, so that means it's quite um, long and uh, big and that means uh, we get those ringing artifacts. Okay, so let's press the key Q. So this shows you this effect. So also try it on your own and experiment a little bit with um, patterns which you can find in pictures, find patterns and see how they look like. Yeah, so we saw most of the coefficients of the 2D DFT with high magnitudes appear in the corners of our 2D DFT. That's where the low frequencies are located. And holding this fine pattern in front of the camera results also in high magnitudes at higher frequencies, like brighter rays. Then by pushing key F for filter, we can set most of the high frequency coefficients to zero and still get a good picture, just a little blurry and with those wavy lines at the edges. By pushing key S, we can turn sampling on and off. Without the low pass filter, the reconstructed image only has a lattice of active pixels. The 2D um, DFT image shows the spectral copies, the aliasing, appearing periodically in the spectrum. By then switching the low pass filter on, we remove or suppress the spectral copies. As a result, the reconstructed images look like before with only the low pass turned on and much better than without the low pass filter. If we leave the low pass on and we don't see a difference in the reconstructed image uh, when we toggle sampling on and off. So if we have the low pass on and just toggle um, sampling on and off, there's actually not much of a difference. So we didn't really try it, so let me try that again. So execute this. So here's the reconstructed, here's the frequency domain. Now just filter on. So the reconstructed, now you have those wavy lines and it looks a little bit more blurry. And now I'm can, I can turn sampling on and off, pressing key S. So now sampling is on and now sampling is off. 
and you can see here in the reconstructed image there's hardly any difference right and that is because I always have this low pass filter on and for the low pass filter um, the alias components which appear from sampling do not show up so that shows again it's a conf confirmation of the sampling theorem if we do the right low pass filtering then we can reconstruct despite sampling and this is basically the confirmation sampling off sampling on and we always reconstruct the same low pass filter version okay yeah uh, okay so that should be it for today and uh, yeah thank you for your attention and see you next time